Hello everyone, this is Mr. Matus and I'm here to do a quick review of nursing delegation and prioritization. A lot of nurses are struggling um, answering these types of uh, questions in the NCLEX, so hopefully that after my presentation uh, they will be able to have an idea on how to answer these types of questions in the NCLEX. So I would like to remind the nurses that there are three main things that they need to really develop first before they could pass the NCLEX. So letter A, I would like them to remember that attitude and determination is very important. So with the right kind of uh, mindset and motivation, that will help nurses to really do their best to study and pass the NCLEX. So letter B is basic uh, core content mastery. So I would like nurses to remember that for them to be able to develop critical thinking skills, they need to go back and really understand the basic concepts in nursing, starting from anatomy and physiology to pharmacology. And of course, lastly, a very important component to pass the NCLEX is to really develop the critical thinking skills as well as the test taking skills and usually I would advise nurses to really answer thousands of questions before uh, taking the NCLEX and right now there are a lot of uh, online resources to practice test questions such as UWorld, the uh, NCSVN learning extension and a lot more resources which I usually include in my NCLEX review program. So with all of this, the A, B, and C, um, attitude and determination, uh, going back to understanding basic core content mastery and developing critical thinking skills as well as test taking skills, all of these three combined will definitely lead to NCLEX uh, success. So how do you prioritize in the NCLEX? Uh, there are certain principles that need to be remembered. And one of them is using the principles of ABC or airway, breathing, and circulation principle. So those patients having problems with airway, patients having breathing problems, or patients having circulation problems such as hemorrhage or bleeding are priority patients in the NCLEX. Another way to answer questions on prioritization in the NCLEX is to also use the principles of the nursing process or the steps of the nursing process, which are your assessment, planning, implementation, and evaluation. Uh, always remember that some questions in the NCLEX will be asking nurses or the examinees on how to uh, intervene in critical situations. And lastly, I think all of us are really very familiar with this principle and that is the, uh, the uh, concept of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. To always remember that physiologic needs come first before the other needs of the patients. This is a very simple mnemonic to remember when prioritiz prioritizing patients. U is A. So U stands for unrelieved by interventions. A patient may be in a very critical situation or having a critical condition if nursing interventions are not effective. So usually when we have done a lot of things or a lot of interventions, we have elevated the head of the patient, we have given pain medications, we have given uh, breathing treatments, but still if these interventions are not effective, that is an indication that that patient may be in a very serious situation. As a sudden occurrence is also uh, an indication that a uh, particular symptom is very serious. And lastly, letter A, an obvious change or a marked change in a patient's condition could also be a, uh, an indication that the patient is developing worsening of symptoms. So remember this very short mnemonic, your USA, because even in actual clinical practice, this will really be helping you in determining if your patient is a priority patient. So how do you prioritize 
there are certain rules that I would like you to remember on how to prioritize patients. So rule number one, always look for keywords in the stem of the question, like uh, highest priority, uh, immediate, initial, best, most important, next, primary, or first. So these are all the keywords that you are being asked of a uh, priority uh, regarding patient care. Rule number two, all of the choices may actually be correct, but you have to choose the best answer. Unfortunately, in the NCLEX, sometimes you think that all of the questions are, or all of the distractors are wrong, but then some dis distractors could actually be correct, but you still have to choose the best answer, especially when you, talk, when you are talking about uh, prioritization of patient care. So be very careful about this, because I usually advise students to really read all of the distractors like A, B, C, and D, and I want them to really pick the best answer. Not just to get excited about a particular distractor, but to really analyze the questions very well and to really pick the best answer. And do not eliminate uh, options if you are not sure that the option is wrong. So it's very important to be careful and to really read all of the choices. Number three uh, rule is to choose life-threatening acute or actual issues before chronic or potential issues. So anything that starts with risk for may not be the best answer in the NCLEX because risk for means that it is a potential issue. You should focus more on items wherein it indicates it's really happening now. For example, severe difficulty of breathing, low uh, pulse oximetry, oximetry reading, for example. So be very careful with that because in terms of prioritizing client needs, we are more concerned of what's really happening than what's going to happen. Rule number four, these are just really the clues for unstable or critical conditions. Um, this will be very helpful for you to determine which patient needs to be prioritized. So these are the clues that this patient should come first in your list of priorities. Those who have acute symptoms, meaning that they happen suddenly and they are also severe, a marked change in the patient's condition, a sudden occurrence also, immediate post-operative patients are usually prior prior priorities, especially if it's less than 12 hours, Newly admitted patients may be very, very unstable also. Recent procedure or a patient who just comes back from a diagnostic procedure. Patients with uh, critical lab results, uh, especially your potassium, especially your sodium and your uh, calcium. A change in the patient's level of consciousness. A breathing problem. A patient who has safety issues, for example, a patient uh, who is uh, thinking of committing a suicide, for example. A low pulse oximetry reading, uh, chest pain, a low blood sugar, neutropenia, which makes the patient prone to infection, thrombocytopenia, which is all about uh, the possibility of bleeding, and lastly, of course, will be the unstable vital signs. So these are just some of the clues that would help you uh, determine if your patient is a priority in the NCLEX. Now let's go to uh, delegation. So how should nurses delegate? So rule number one, delegate the right task to the right person. So if the person doesn't have the experience, the person um, doesn't have the scope to uh, perform the, uh, the nursing procedure, then the person should not receive the task. Rule number two, for the RN who's going to delegate the nursing task to the LVN or to the CNA. The RN or the delegator must review the person's experience, the competence, and most importantly also is the scope of practice, especially for LVNs wherein they are not supposed to give uh, intravenous fluids or, or I mean the IV antibiotics. Uh, job description, policy and procedure, state nursing practice act, practice act are also important considerations when when uh, giving assignments or delegating a task to a CNA or to an LVN. Rule number three, for registered nurses, this is really very important. Do not delegate clients who are newly diagnosed because they are unstable. 
newly admitted, immediate post-op patients, again, unstable patients, those who need monitoring, especially if they have changing vital signs or they just uh, uh, came from surgery, for example. Those who need initial complete assessment. In the NCLEX, initial assessment is always being done by the registered nurse. Uh, those patients who need, uh, who need also complete teaching. Uh, complete teaching in the NCLEX is done by the registered nurses. Uh, LVNs can also teach, but uh, most of this teaching should all only be follow-up teaching or, or reinforcement of teaching. But uh, definitely for, for complete teaching, especially for discharge instructions, that must be done by the RN. And of course, lastly, any patient with IV should be, uh, should be taken care only by the uh, registered nurse, especially those patients have, having IV antibiotics. So rule number four, it must be remem remembered that nursing assistants are just really responsible for non-complex tasks. So for example, the provision of hygiene needs like bathing, ambulation, positioning, feeding, changing Foley bag, basic skin care, range of motion exercises, and obtaining a vital signs. But again, uh, vital signs can be taken only if the patient is uh, stable. But if the patient is unstable, uh, definitely it has to be the RN that should be taking the uh, vital signs by that patient. And rule number five for RNs, do not assign unstable patients to the following nurses. Uh, the floaters, for example, the new graduate nurses, uh, the re registry nurses also and the LVNs or LPNs. Uh, the reason why is because probably because of the lack of experience and being not familiar with the uh, protocols in the nursing unit. So remember number five, especially for RNs, do not delegate these patients because they are unstable patients. This is a very simple way to remember, especially for RNs, not to delegate these patients to the LVNs or CNAs. Do not delegate EAT. E stands for evaluate, A stands for assess, and T stands for teach. So this is just a very quick review of nursing delegation and prioritization. I hope that it has given you an idea on how to approach questions in the NCLEX pertaining to this type of, uh, of uh, questions. And I'm really very sure that 90% of, of the uh, time these kinds of questions will be asked because uh, NCLEX is a safety uh, exam. The questions are all um, developed in order to assess nurses' ability to provide safe nursing care to patients and to protect public safety as well. So thank you very much. So for more information, you could email me at info at matusnursingreview.com or you could visit my website at www.matusnursingreview.com. Thank you and have a nice day, everyone.